Hello, this is Colt again from Spit and Text Upholstery here in Spokane, Washington. We're doing a boat seat from uh, beginning to end, tear down to finish. So our first one was uh, the removing of uh, the hide staples and trim and aesthetics and whatnot. <laughs> and then uh, the second one was steaming the foam and uh, tearing apart the skin and uh, this third one is the skin torn apart and we're going to trace it out to cut it now when I was tearing it apart I pointed out some key factors there were some crimping the piping the black welt cord was diving in certain areas and it wasn't hugging the perimeters of the foam and uh, it's important that the foam, the perimeters are followed with piping that is on the table right there. That's the old piping and that's the new. So you adjust. And these are the patterns and how we adjust is uh, You'll notice that up here on the top, it's a quarter inch. Down here, it's a half inch. Down here, it's a quarter inch. Their soil allowances are very inconsistent. So you try to remedy those situations as you have your pieces laid out. You'll notice that they get real narrow here too. You always want a half inch soil allowance so you have a consistent pattern. <clears throat> and as you tear these apart, you want to get the strings out of them. So when you do iron them, they lay flat, okay? But you're gonna grab a ruler like this and you're gonna come on the inside of the pattern, okay? You're gonna see where you're at and you're gonna know. You could just take your ruler like that and you can use a pen, <coughs> you know, and straighten it out, make it a half inch, make it a half inch. You'll see where your sole allowances is. Go out a half inch from where these, where, where your last stitch pattern was. That's how you know your pattern. You can see that that's a smooth rounding curve. <clears throat> okay. So you'll, that's your guideline. Just make sure that you just add just enough. You, I mean, I've done it long enough to where I know what a half inch looks like. I can just trace that and just bam, it's done. So anyway, we're tracing it out. This is the main body. And there's seven pieces with the anchor. This is the anchor I've just pre-measured. And uh, it's five and a half inches wide. <clears throat> so that one's ready to cut. I've washed my table off real nice. I'm going to have to paint my table again. After every job, I normally paint my table again, like 17 bucks at Walmart. And it's water soluble and you can wash it. But you want it clean, especially when you're doing white like this. So I cleaned the table before we started this. And... Uh, so like on this here, you'll notice that we don't have a complete corner. So you're going to have to make sure that you, you know, you fix that. And you can see how this wobbles and wavers, okay? And there's that thread that I was talking about getting rid of. You see how that, you know, you pull that. You, when, you're, when you're doing exact patterns, take your time and get rid of all of this thread, Anything that's not going to make it not lay right. That's it's that's your whole your whole goal. Anyway, um, we're ready to go. So <clears throat> this is patterning. You want to take your time and remember where you're at. You see where your staples are on the bottom. Don't concern yourself so much with that. Where these where uh, these sew allowances are, your half inches. You want them half inch, and you want your corners square. You know, so boom, boom, boom. There we go. And then prior, remember, we have one left and right. We have two left and right. We have three left and right. It's just, it just helps. You got to keep 
keep your stuff organized and then then there's no panic and and your your project will be a success like i told told you earlier there's a lot of people that cut corners and they still pull it off which amazes me sometimes but uh, and a lot of this is um, what they did was they came back with their scissors and they trimmed this edge. This probably was a true half inch and they trimmed it so it will lay right. When you go to upholster it and you put it on the foam, um, it'll bubble and ripple here and there and you have to, you know, you have to get in there and make sure your sole allowances lay the right way on top of your foam. So this is, that, that's why it's important that, uh, your uh, your sole allowances are a half inch to begin with because if it wasn't he wouldn't have been able to trim this to where his corner was nice and flat and round and you couldn't see it you know the edge of your seat cushion you would see this sole allowance sticking there but he could have done it a certain way to where he could have laid it put his hand under there and as he stapled it and upholstered it he could have got the sole allowance to lay with the foam so, you know, he's just cutting corners so he doesn't have to manipulate the sole allowance. When you go to upholster, your sole allowance is key. It will show. On the top of your seat, you're going to see that little line. Like, a, you know, you're going to see something underneath of, you know, all you had to do was reach under there before you stapled it down, pull your finger down, and get it to flap over the edge. And lay flat with the front of the seat cushion and you wouldn't have ever seen it on top little things like that so there's a lot to it like I said you're gonna you can ask me questions uh, it's impossible to do a video and just tell you everything but for the most part you'll know exactly what you're doing here so this is a pattern uh, you, you don't want to deviate too far your bottom you got wiggle room on the bottom your top up here where that where it sews together you have to you have to be consistent make sure everything's flat you know you've already iron I've already ironed this out make sure before you go tracing you push the center to the sides and back like this okay like I said where the staples are you you're you're okay but up here and I went through and, and wiped off the glues that were on here and you know because you don't you don't want that all over try to keep your your patterns as clean as possible like you noticed in the second video that there was he had this tape together because uh, his uh, his sew allowance blew out but see how that's coming off like that I didn't see that piece but it doesn't matter it's flat enough but you want to come through little trick too is you'll notice where your stitching was, you just take your seam ripper and wiggle it back and forth. See that come right up like that? <sighs> so just get in the habit of always doing that. You know, that's that's how you get it up. So you can use a number of different kinds of pins and sharpies. Uh, uh, the less uh, obtrusive the better but if you're if you're on the money you're gonna cut into that and it won't bleed through some some inks or pens will bleed through your vinyl and you'll see it but it'll be hidden in the sole allowance so don't overthink it too much but be advised that it, it is a possibility so this is our first one our number one so I'll just come up here bam and you know and, and lay it down with your fingers as you're going okay might have to use an elbow whatever and then you can just kind of wing it remember that's the bottom now we have a sole allowance here so you're going to want to come along and give yourself that half inch see that right there that space that's that half inch you can see you want to keep it straight 
And you see that? That's missing there. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> anyway. And then <clears throat> to get a straight line on a big course, come around this back side here. Now you'll see, see the line. So I put my ruler right up next to that line just to hold it flat. And then I'll rest my pen on it. And then I'll just give myself a straight course. Things like that, little tricks, smarter, not harder. Again, yeah. And then how it rounds like that, I would recommend following that because that's a relief cut. So, and then remember in the first video, the, this is the edge of the anchor, the anchor that in between these two pieces of foam that makes it dive down, it, it gives it that contour. Make sure to mark this. That's what that is. That's a witness mark. Witness marks are your friends. And remember the original one, I came up almost a whole inch, probably three quarters of an inch. That's the original one, but I liked it better towards the edge, remember, because I like to contour my shapes, and he should have too. Anyway, that's uh, pattern number one. So we bring this back, and then we go uh, on the edge. When it, with it, with it. Never, never mark with a Sharpie in the field when you're doing white. So come over here and go one. Put a dot, okay? And then you can see... Come over here to the sew allowance because it's hidden and go right. Come over to the sew allowance because it's hidden left. So now this is a sew allowance. See that? That's a half inch. Okay. That's a half inch or it will be. So you got a left, you got a right, you got a number one. Don't mark it like this in the field. It could possibly bleed through different. Some vinyls are different. So always mark in your sew allowance. Little trick. It could turn out to be a nightmare for you if, if you mark the field with the Sharpie. It could bleed through. So allowance, doesn't matter. It's hidden. So, that's number one. <clears throat> Same process. Number two. And you just, you just go through, just like you just did before. And... Uh, And always try to use as much material as you can. See how I'm hugging the top here? So that's really straight. This is a good piece. This is number two. This is the middle. So I'll just trace that. Bam. Straight to the edge. Straight to the edge. This, yeah, this middle piece is real flat. This is a good, a good pattern. Make sure it's all flat and put your arms on it. Use your hands. Remember the stapling bottom. It's not as crucial as the rest of it, but, uh, you know, so come up and then bam. And see that? Remember where I cut that? Use your eye. Doesn't matter. You're good. Just be mindful of everything. So we fold it back and what do we got? And that's front. Sew allowance. Marking the sew allowance. There's an F. That's number two. We'll put a two in the sew allowance. There's the left. We'll come back into the sew allowance and mark L. There's the right. We'll come into the sew allowance and mark R. Why? Again, never mark in the field because it will bleed through when you're doing these kinds of colors. Black wouldn't matter, but I would still recommend getting into the habit of marking in your sew allowances your witness marks, whether they are numerals or they are letters or they are hashes like this is a hash that's a nick it's a witness mark because you'll go with your scissors fold it in half and cut it and there'll be a little a little v there so witness marks are your friends as my esteemed colleague mr pearson has always instilled in his students great man beautiful poster so that's one two and we'll mock up here to three Come over here. So, 
my beautiful assistant, my lovely wife. <laughs> Couldn't do it without her. If you get a good wife, hold on to her. So, okay. Same thing. Nothing's new here. But, you know, you evaluate things. So, look at this one, for instance. Now, these vinyls will wrinkle and curl and roll on you. Especially if they're old. It's it's really difficult. That's why, you, you know, you use your arms and you, you spread them out and you splay them out. You know what they're supposed to look like. You know stuff shrinks up. So, you know, you'll give it a little stretch here and there and, and see where it relaxes, see where it goes. So, you know. But this, you see, he cut that. I would like to think he cut that. So, so it laid, you couldn't see it, the finished product, as he went to upholster it. So he didn't have to put the work in to fold it uh, to contour the foam. So again, this is our true mark. We'll come to the top of this. Boom. Okay. Now this, see what this is? That's that dive that we're trying to avoid. So I can see it. You just come straight across. That'll eliminate that little dive. Remember on the edge of the seat? That's how you get rid of it. You just add more material to your pattern. These are the outsides of the seat. This is number three. Number one's behind me. These are those dives. You'll see. And see how I'm, you know, that's a half inch. Bam. And then we lost a little bit here. So we'll come up. And you can see right there that that's what's going on. And so we're going to follow the pattern down to the edge. And there's another little trick, too. Yep, stretch that out. When... Uh, When you go to cut this, never cut on the inside of your of your line. Always cut on the outside, just a sixteenth of an inch around your pattern. It's not going to hurt anything. You know what a half inch is. Over time, you'll learn where, how to go, where a corner is. See, there's this is a bottom staple. This is a fold under. This isn't like. You have two pieces of fabric where you have to meet a corner and then do a relief cut and then come back to where when you fold it inside out, it's a perfect pointed corner. Another lesson for another day. but So these are just flat runs. But they're in, it's imperative. Half inch is a half inch and do not deviate. You come up, you're sewing, bam. You come up right there, you plant your needle at a half inch. Turn your fabric. Proceed forward, one, two, back tack, one, and then go on. That locks that in, that corner. Little habits that you want to get into, little tricks. That's a trick that a lot of people don't use, but it'll save you. You know, uh, let's say your tension isn't right on your sewing machine or your, your, your stitch count per inch. You know, how many times that needle hits per inch is incorrect. It could back out on you. Well, you have a, you know, $800 hide that you're sewing, you, you know, and there's, you can't, there's no room for mistakes. It will screw that whole piece up and you'll have to start all over because it'll show there's a hole in it. With leather, it's one shot, one kill. And vinyl too, in those instances. So anyway, now what do we do? Remember, we pull our piece back and what do we have? We have a right. So in our sew allowance, we do a small R. Okay, we come up here. What do we got? We got a number three. In our sew allowance, we'll put a three. Bam. And then we have a left. So in our sew allowance, we'll put an L with a little dot. Okay, R with a little dot. And over time, you'll you'll uh, you'll 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 come up with your own markings. Some people. Uh, if, there, if you wind up having massive, uh, you know, you've got 13, 14 pieces, uh, you know, I've used X's, I've used O's, you know, I've used check marks. 
it'll be your thing over time. You'll, you'll become familiar with this. Tracing a pattern is massive, and it's, it's no quarter, like I mentioned. It's, it is what it is or it ain't. So we're good. And you see how that is kind of jagged a little bit? It really doesn't matter. I mean, I could still come out to here and just to make my eye happier because this is, this is staples. Okay, that's staples. This is also allowance up here on top. Okay, and then the middles here, these are FR, they're French seams, FR. So as you come back, you go FR, FR, French seams, there's two, okay? So now, that's how you trace, okay? You don't need to watch me do the rest of this. It's the same thing where, you know, where it comes around and it's shallow there. You want to give it a little meat, boom, and make that a half inch. I myself don't cut those off. I fold them as I upholster the seat. Anyway, um, and then down here, you know, you'll just accommodate. You'll make it a half inch. And you got your length because that's why you ironed it. So now, you know, it's not shrinking anymore. It is what it is. So you know it's that length. I recommend when you are tracing an old pattern like this, give yourself a quarter inch on this half inch sole allowance. Remember, this is where these two gussets meet. This is the side of the seat. This is the back of the seat that's hidden. Where these two pieces meet, and they're mirror imaged, one there, one there, they meet here. Give yourself a quarter inch, which equates to one half of an inch. Wiggle room, because of shrinkage. So be mindful of all these things. To trace a pattern, you might think, okay, I got it. But you don't got it. You have to accommodate. You have to make it straight. Like I said, down here on the bottom, where it staples, that's nothing. That's what I just showed you there. But where them sole allowances are, boom, 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 one, two, three in this particular application, they're crucial. So you make them straight. You make that course straight. Because do you recall what goes here? This goes here. And that's the anchor. Once these two pieces, this and these three pieces are sewn together, on that same sole allowance, you sew that anchor. That's what separates these two pieces. Where does it go here? Like this. Okay, remember? Remember how that is? These, this is our French seam. See the, see the pattern marks? Well, in between these, right here is an anchor. And as you upholster this big piece, you anchor that down staple it down, but don't distort it like they had it. And then you put this on top of that, okay? And then fold the rest of it over. So it goes bink, bink, this is distinguished. And that's why I use scrim because it gives a little bit more meat and you can, you can see the two different pieces of seat. So, uh, and the French theme is purely decorative. So I know that, that uh, I, I skip around a lot, but what I said was exact. I wouldn't say it any other way. Listen to the video again. <clears throat> this anchor has to ride true. So these, they're crucial. They have to be straight. And then you can take the time sometimes, and let's see. Let's just check our work. Okay, this is the French seam. What do I have? I come up here to the relief. And, you know, we got 16 and a half. What do we have here? We got 16 and three quarters. What do we have here? 16 and three quarters. What do we have here? 16 and a half. See, that doesn't matter because the bottom is stapled. What do we revert to now? Is our line true? Where these meet, these two pieces of the individual fabrics meet, they have to be true. A straight line. So this has to be straight, this has to be straight, that has to be straight. There can't be no wiggles in it. 
And then when you put your anchor on, you can ride that on the edge of this foam and the eye doesn't lie. <sighs> Winning, you got it. And then the welt cord goes, goes around here and around and dives down. And remember how far they were in on this? That's what we're fixing with when we went to trace, you know, we went to trace this, remember, remember how, remember how it was, it was dipped down. Remember that, that was dipped down the original pattern. Remember, this is three, yeah. Okay, so remember, see that? See that? That dip right there, that vacant piece of fabric that we just added is this. So we're eliminating that by adding that piece of fabric and we will come right to the edge. And it will hold its shape better because we're putting a quarter inch of scrim on it. So it gives us more volume and we will have a tight, round, concise corner. So if you can't keep up, take some notes. All right. So that's what we're doing. And, and tracing, tearing, tearing a, a seat apart, pay attention. Where's the anchors? What are you looking at? Was it weird before you tore it apart? And then once you take the hide off, this is the hide, you know, the, the original, the whole upholstery you take off of it. It's usually in one piece in most cases. Um, then, then you have to tear that apart, but you have to be mindful and remember, remember you want to avoid these things. You want to remedy and fix these things. And this will happen to you almost in every upholstery job that you do. Not everybody, unfortunately, holds this in, in a real high regard. This is a dying art. You're an artist. Always remember, you are an artist. Just like any painter. And you marvel at these people that paint these pictures. Well, they marvel at us. We make these perfect and do not settle for less. This is, it's pivotal. Or, or find a different trade. All of these mundane tasks, they, the, the payoff is, there's nothing like it in the end. I mean, when the stuff walks out of your shop and it's just perfect. Just, you know, you could bounce a bullet off that seat. It's just pop, pop, pop. Uh, so these little, these little tricks, you know, you want a true course. Pieces of fabric, true course, true course. And now that I'm looking at this, I really don't like that. So that wavered enough to get my attention. So there's a little wiggle in there. So I'm going to go to that, that end with my ruler and this end with my ruler. And what do I see? You see that? See that white space? Get rid of it. So these three, oh, and there's another little wiggle here. So go from corner to corner, okay, corner to corner, and that's your, that's where you sew. See, I lost a little, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. Remember, they were 16 and a half, 16 and three quarters. All of that's made up on the bottom, as long as it's 16 inches, you know, and, and that's kind of a, that's something that you'll have to presume, not assume, presume because you know what it looks like. You can see it. So upholstery is not as easy as you think, is it? But I will reveal these secrets to you. This is just one of many, many applications. <clears throat> when there's three pieces like this, you make sure that they're, 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 they're true at, at the course. And if they staple on the bottom, they're fold unders, which every boat seat is. Uh, you got plenty of room. I hope that I'm, I'm, I'm explaining this correctly. It's a lot, it's a lot to share with you guys. Uh, but if you stick with me and you want to learn how to do this, we have many, many different projects. We do so many different things. Uh, but it all reverts back to true courses, 
correct witness marking, like in the in, within the boundaries, within the soil allowances, uh, um, clean tables, clean work environment, uh, how to anticipate where where something do dove in. You remember what it looked like before we tore it apart. So what did I do? I made it straight. Pretty damn simple. He could have done that when he did it the first time. Okay, and then we added the anchor. We added, like right here, okay, we added, you know, five-eighths of an inch to where this right here, because your, your, your piping comes around here, okay, and your anchor comes here. But it doesn't have to distort no more than the middle. Where you have these bulbous pieces that meet, one's higher, one's lower, wherever the edge of the seed is, you, you have to, it has to flow evenly all the way across and then dive up, okay? Um, I know that's a lot. But uh, so moving on, this is your first lesson in, in uh, tracing a pattern. You have to anticipate. You have to uh, accommodate. You have to add, but add to the eye. Like you remember, this dove in real crazy. I just showed you with the number three pattern. It was, it was short, so I straightened it out. Now when this comes around, we'll make sure to hug this corner, and it'll go bink, and then rise up, and go bink, and go down, and it will look correct. It'll, it'll be correct. Um, so, you know, you would have never thought that tracing an old pattern is so crucial. All of these little weird hiccups and stuff, you have to, you have to uh, accommodate for those and you have to make them correct you go back to ground zero this piece right here perfect example this is a gusset outside gusset you can see that it's, he cut this so you have to fix that and this shrinks a little bit even though it looks good it probably shrunk you know three-eighths of an inch maybe or at least two-eighths so you come up and you square it and you make your corner round with your eye, you know, but don't exceed a half of an inch. And then boom, and then if it comes up, boom, there's a half inch, well, lo and behold. So we'll just we'll just ride it and just follow that half inch down and just make it make it true all the way. And then like I said, add a quarter inch where two pieces meet on a gusset always. Trust me, it 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 fabric gathers, new fabric gathers, especially when you're sewing through fabric or vinyl in this instance with foam underneath it gathers it gathers you can come up short sometimes you can always after you've been doing this long enough you could even add a half inch to make this you know longer make it a whole inch on the end and then trim it off just fold them together you know muscle your your whole piece up sew it boom fold it under run it you're good so this is tracing we started with tear down and staples we went right into tear down and uh, uh seam rip and iron to prepare for tracing an original pattern you will run into this so many times sometimes you can make your own patterns if, if you're so inclined. I do it quite often because sometimes I run across some real janky stuff. <clears throat> but this is a key lesson to take apart a nasty old cushion and, and you know, work it. Work with it and trace it out to where it'll sew together perfect. So now that's, that's it for the tracing lesson. I'll do the rest of this. And uh, so... The next video is me cutting
foam and fabric spray adhesive. Okay. My buddies here in town just started selling this, and I don't mind it. It's not bad. It's uh, two ounces short, but, uh, you know, so is the economy. So I'll come here like this. Well, anyway, I made a mess. But put some adhesive on that. Splay it out. Put your fabric. See how we do that? We want it to, to splay out like this. And just roll it back. Bam, 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 bam. Easy peasy. This is uh, the lazy man's way to, to do a French scene, but it damn sure is right. So, you sew good side to good side. You know, you cut your fabric. Make sure your course is true. Good side to good side. Sew them together. Half inch sew allowance. Open them up. Lay it on its face. Splay out the sew allowance. Come back. I told you I like a six. So, this is a... Um, um, a zipper foot. I use it almost on everything. Some people can wield them, some people can't, and you can change your feet. We have different feet for different applications. You have dual feet, you have zipper feet, you have uh, uh, welt cord feet. Uh, there's, a, there's many, many, many feet. But this here, like you'll see the hole here, if you'll notice on this, the outside foot, there isn't a foot on the inside. So what I like to do is like this I like to come and this is my gauge okay I'll come on the outside right there and I'll go a quarter inch one one forward one back okay and see this this rides that now watch And back tap. Knee lift, wiggle, come out. Boom, pull your thread tight, come back, pull your thread tight. Now, what we have is a real tight, tight thread. Tighter than, I should have adjusted it a little different. So we're gonna go up to like a seven. And let's see what the other side. So we turn it around and we do the same thing. Okay. The opposite side. Plant your needle. Same distance. One forward, one back. Now you'll see the different thread spacing. You can use your feet for a guide and back tap. Now you'll see that this is a little bit further apart. This is, this is more uh, to my liking for a French steam. Now, if you'll notice, you see how far apart that is opposed to that. So that's a French seam. So you have a backing. Okay. That's a French seam. And you don't have to glue it down like that. You can, you can wing it and hold it and tug it and then go da 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 da, -da and then adjust it and da 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 that. You know, and sometimes... You know, like on in, on this instance, it's at an angle. Sometimes they go like this. Sometimes they S. But that is a French seam. And that is what goes right there. That's a French seam in between these two pieces. So you sew these. How I would do it is I would start with number one and number two. And then I would go good side to good side, just like I did that. I would sew them together. I would splay it out, hammer it down. You cut my piece accordingly, cut it fat, so you got wiggle room, two inches, and then I would sew it on, and then I would do the second piece. I wouldn't sew the whole thing together, because the less amount of salvage that you have to wield underneath of your machine, the more room you have. So always keep that in mind. A rule of thumb. Trust me. When you've got a big ball of stuff and you're trying to do something... So if you can only use if if you can if you can do this with two pieces instead of three, do it, and then do the third one last. So this is what that's going to look like when that's sewn together, and then this whole piece sews onto this, okay, and then we sew the anchor 
and then we sew the gussets. Two identical pieces, seven pieces. Boat seat. So, that's your lesson for the French seam. Now, quickly, I'm going to show you how to do a, uh, a welt cord piping. So, we'll take a piece like this, okay? And then we will take a, uh, another piece of vinyl. Let's just take a scrap piece and we'll, we'll just sew this together real quick. And, it, and it's a, uh, uh, this is, that's the same foot that you need. So roughly you want, <clears throat> let's see, yeah, like two and a quarter inches, two and a quarter inches is fine. Okay, so you have your fabric and you have your welt cord piping. So then we come up here like this. I always like to leave at least an inch and a half hanging out the end and then you just fold it over like this. And you see how that, now watch how that rests. You see how that foot rests right up against that cord? That's what that foot's designed for. Okay, so you get it flat, plant your needle, always get in the habit of planting your needle first, and then come forward, back tack a little bit, and we'll bring it up just a little bit, and then you grab it like this, and use your finger, finger, outside, you'll get better at it as time goes on. And if you're coming around and you're meeting two pieces, okay, to where it comes around a cushion and it comes together, always stop at least two inches with just one back tack before the end, okay? Because if you're meeting two pieces together, you have to clip them accordingly, and then I can show you how to do that at another time. But basically, that's it for piping because this is a straight stretch around the perimeter and it tacks underneath, so there's nothing fancy. You could have went right to the end. It does not matter. Um, so this is how to trace an old existing pattern, how to accommodate, how to manipulate, how to avoid and repair poor upholstery from the previous uh, upholsterer. This is a French seam with two different stitch counts. This is piping. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, peace be with you. There's many, many more to come. So be patient. If you want to learn, I'm your guy. Uh, I'll, I, won't, I won't leave anything out. It's long. It's mundane. Upholstery is prep. And it's brutal. And it's nasty most times. Upholstery itself, once this is all put together, bam, flies together. I mean, it's ridiculous. Upholstery is prep, and this is the artistry of it. So, I'm Colt, and I'm spitting text upholstery. I'll see you around like a donut.